Welcome to our video on a unique clinical case report involving a rare complication from an intramuscular injection. We'll explore the patient's journey, diagnosis, treatment, and the lessons learned from this medical case. Intramuscular injections are common procedures, but incorrect techniques can lead to severe complications. This case involves a healthy middle-aged man who developed systemic inflammatory response syndrome after a gluteal artery injury. The patient, a 40-year-old man, experienced pain and fever after a dorsogluteal injection. Despite initial treatments, his condition worsened, leading to a diagnosis of a deep gluteal abscess. Upon admission, the patient showed signs of jaundice and low hemoglobin levels. Imaging revealed a gluteal abscess, prompting immediate surgical intervention to drain the abscess and address the bleeding. Surgery involved a curved incision behind the trochanter. The gluteus maximus was bluntly dissected along the fibers. Under the gluteus maximus muscle, abscess fluid, whitish yellow, is drained. After drainage, there was still bleeding between the fibers. Of the gluteus medius muscle, which suggests that the injection caused damage to a branch of the superior gluteal artery. This finding explained the patient's low hemoglobin levels. Post-surgery, the patient received antibiotics and showed significant improvement within five days. Follow-up visits confirmed his recovery with no signs of complications or mobility issues. The timeline of events highlights the progression from injection to diagnosis and treatment. Initial symptoms were overlooked, delaying the correct diagnosis and intervention. This case underscores the importance of accurate diagnosis and timely intervention in preventing severe complications from intramuscular injections. The surgical approach involved dissecting the gluteus maximus to drain the abscess. The presence of Staphylococcus aureus was confirmed through microbiological examination. The discussion highlights the risks of the dorsogluteal injection technique, advocating for the ventrogluteal method to avoid major nerve and artery damage. Literature reviews reveal few reports of gluteal artery injuries from injections. This case is unique in documenting both a hematoma and abscess due to such an injury. Experts recommend the ventrogluteal technique for intramuscular injections, citing its safety and effectiveness compared to the traditional dorsogluteal method. The ventrogluteal site offers consistent adipose tissue coverage, reducing the risk of nerve and vessel damage. This technique should be taught alongside traditional methods for patient safety. The conclusion calls for increased awareness of the risks associated with the dorsogluteal technique and recommends adopting safer alternatives in medical practice. According to the authors, the main mistake in this injection technique is often the administration of the injector somewhat further towards the center. According to their statement, this might potentially harm the gluteal arteries and sciatic nerve. Nurses should be taught the ventrogluteal technique along the dorsogluteal site. The dorsogluteal site carries risks such as damage to the sciatic, nerve, superior gluteal artery, and irritation to the subcutaneous tissue. Teaching the ventrogluteal technique may be challenging, but it is necessary for patient safety. The illustration of the gluteal artery injury and hematoma formation provides a visual understanding of the complications that can arise from improper injection techniques. The report emphasizes the need for proper training and technique in administering intramuscular injections to prevent serious complications and ensure patient safety. The researchers hypothesized that the usual injector length in the classical upper quadrant gluteal injection approach is insufficient to penetrate the muscle because of the thick fat pad in this area. Thank you for watching our video on this clinical case report. We hope it has provided valuable insights into the complexities and considerations in medical practice.